So today we are going to be installing an NP205 transfer case on a ZF5 transmission. And this requires that you notch the transmission so the shift rail can clear. It's actually a really simple modification and I'm going to show you how to do it with uh, a few common tools. Today we're going to be taking a MP205 transfer case and attaching it to a ZF5. Uh, this transfer case never came attached to that transmission from the factory. So we are going to have to notch it for this shift rail right here. You can see that it's part of the pattern, it's not outside of it. So I've got uh, a gasket that came in my MP205 uh, rebuild kit right here. And you can see that it's got a notch for the shift rail. We're going to use this as a pattern. So right here is where the dowel pin goes and you'll see uh, a hole on the gasket for that same thing. So we put it on there and you can see that there is quite a bit of gap between the shift rail and the gasket. So we don't actually have to remove that much material. The shift rail is uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter, 0 0.750 decimal. So I'm going to use a one inch hole saw to clearance the transmission so it clears this. A quarter inch is as good as a quarter mile. You don't have to have a lot of extra room. This is the back of the ZF5 transmission that we are going to be notching out. Uh, this is the gasket that we just had on the transfer case. Now we're going to line it up using the dowel pin hole and you'll see that the notch lines up right where the shifter bosses are. So I'm going to drop a couple of bolts in here just to keep this sort of square. It doesn't really need to be done. It doesn't go anywhere. But uh, right here is where we have to notch out. And you'll see this boss, uh, I'm sorry, this uh, strengthening rib right here and the boss might need to be trimmed. We're just going to try and do the strengthening rib first and leave the boss. Uh, all of this needs to be strong so the minimum amount of material removed is better. So off camera I have taken a marker and I marked where the notch is and then I've also drilled a pilot hole to uh, keep my drill in place. Now I'm going to take the gasket and the bolts off of here so I don't mess them up with the hole saw in case it slips. Uh, Alright, so this is a one inch hole saw. Um, going to cut down through there and then I'm going to use a different saw to cut this strengthening rib out. Uh, probably a hacksaw. Here we go. That cut like butter. So the next step is going to be to take a cutting disc and cut these little edges off right here for a cleaner look. And then we're also going to have to cut out this uh, support behind it. Now let's uh, trim those edges that the hole saw left with a cutting disc. Now I'm taking great care to not point the blade towards my face. And you'll notice I, I like to run grinders without a guard. There is a chance that this disc can explode. And uh, if you ever Google the pictures of what it looks like when one of those explodes into someone's face, it's not pretty. So even though it's pointed towards the camera, it's not pointed towards me. And we'll do the other side. Now this is actually a steel disc. It's not meant for aluminum, but it still works. Right. Now I cannot find an angle to do this where I wasn't in the way, but I'm cutting that support rib straight across to the edge where the hole saw 
went all the way down. And this is going to give me enough room to get a hacksaw in so I can trim the rest of it out. I could probably do this with a sawzall, but uh, it's aluminum. It cuts so fast that uh, a hacksaw is just fine. To cut this last little piece off, I'm going to use a hacksaw. So I went over to my toolbox and grabbed the first one I found. It's not even particularly sharp, but aluminum cuts super easy. So right here, uh, I had a little bit of an issue getting it to clear the flange, the back side of the blade. You'll see that I'm, I'm fighting it a little bit. But once I got about an eighth inch of in, uh, it, it cuts just fine. Okay, let's speed this up a little bit because it's boring. Man, look how fast that went. It just cut like butter. So now I'm going to take and put the transfer case and the transmission on the ground because if I try and put the transfer case on with the flange pointing up like this, it is going to leak from the bolt holes. Uh, they go all the way into the transfer case and my particular transfer case still has uh, gear oil in it. And I don't like making messes. So let's go to that. So here I've got the transfer case and the transmission on the ground and I'm going to try and wrestle them together to make sure that I made enough clearance on that boss from the shift rail. And if you look at it, these are the holes I was talking about that would leak. They go all the way through to the inside of the transfer case. So when it goes together, it'll get a thread sealer on those so they don't leak. All right, so I rotate it down. Um, it's got to slide in on the splines first, and I probably should have put a little bit of grease in there just uh, to keep it from corroding in the future and to make it slide on better. And it doesn't want to go in the last little bit, so I am going to get some bolts and pull it tight with those bolts to make sure that everything fits together like it should. It's much easier to do it on the ground than to do it on a lift underneath the truck. Now. The ZF5s are known for the tail housing to break and a MP205 is a super heavy transfer case. So if you see on the side of the transfer case there are three bolt holes. Um, those normally went to a mount on the frame on F250s. I am going to take and make a mount similar to that for my truck but I'm also going to run a couple of support struts up to the transmission and I'm not sure where exactly I'll be able to do that to clear the drive shaft but I feel like it'll take some of the the support uh, off of the tail housing uh, I've got shiny new grade 8 bolts to put this together with some washers I am having a terrible time with this gear wrench it's uh, sticking. Uh, I think I need to take it apart and put some grease in it or maybe just replace the thing. It sat in my boat and got rusty at one point so it's been junk ever since then. So uh, anyways it looks like the shift rail clears these bosses really well now. I just have to fabricate some sort of shifter and I, I plan on doing a shifter that just hangs off of the boss like the factory Ford one does. I don't need any sort of crazy twin stick shifter. As a matter of fact, I can't figure out for the life of me a reason why you would need to put the truck in front wheel drive only. Uh, I suppose if you broke a drive shaft or something, I, I feel like the twin stick shifter is just something that everyone buys because they think it's cool and it doesn't really have a function. So anyways, till next time, I appreciate you guys watching this video and uh, tune in for some more uh, videos on my Cummins powered ZF5 diesel F250. Till next time.